As the world continues to serve praise and give thanks to a man whose life touched and warmed the hearts of many across the globe, on Wednesday the 11th, the South African Consulate General in New York City, together with the Riverside Church, hosted a memorial where American politicians, civil and interfaith leaders, artists and others jam-packed the historical monument on Riverside Drive, uptown, to pay tribute to the extraordinary life of Nelson Mandela. The event, which was scheduled to start at 5.30, kicked off with a processional drumming circle. There were prayers. But we're not here to be religious. We're here to be love, all of us. So to be drawn together, to look at a life and a path in life in which all souls can unite in one vision. African Ambassador, His Excellency Kingsley Mamabolo, spoke on behalf of the South African government. We had those drums again today that reminds us so much of where we come back, Africa. And it is with these drums you signaled when he re was released that indeed you were embracing him. You were embracing his ideals. You were embracing his vision. We listen to those drums again today as you signal that you have been with Nelson Mandela in his long walk to freedom. Former first black mayor of New York City, Mayor Dinkins, who was also the organizer for Mandela's first trip, was there to give a speech. Then this great hero accepted our invitation over all others, permitting New Yorkers to be the first Americans to welcome him as their personal champion. I shall never forget that first day on June 20th, 1990, not six months after I'd been sworn in as New York City's first African-American mayor, four months since his release from prison. For Americans to understand what Nelson Mandela meant to South Africa, we should think of George Washington and Martin Luther King Jr. as one person. Like Washington, Madiba was the first president of a new democracy, a leader of a revolution who became the head of state. He could have made himself a king. He was that revered. But he had the humility and the wisdom to insist on democracy. And to the ladies here, you notice whenever he spoke of a new democracy and spoke of a non-sexist democracy, he always said non-sexist and non-racial. But I mean, this, the women were always included. He came from apartheid and imprisonment but like Dr. King, he had a heart forged in love, not hate. He held no bitterness. He was proud and strong, and strong enough to overcome and forgive. After surviving 27 years of imprisonment, speaking truth to power and leading with respect for the law, Nelson Mandela walked out of his cell, reconciled with his oppressors, and led his people to freedom. There were some remarks from religious and civil rights leaders, including Reverend Calvin Butts, Reverend Al Shapton, who likened Nelson Mandela's struggles to their own civil rights in the United States. The ANC started out as a nonviolent movement, pressing for change in a racist and apartheid South Africa. Nelson Mandela, the Honorable Nelson Mandela, pledged himself to that struggle and argued like Negroes did in this country, in the courts, made the appeals, sweet and gentle, peaceful and kind. But there came a day when he changed his mind. 
and he was incarcerated. My, what prison can do. The Apostle Paul was incarcerated many times. Martin Luther King's canonical letter from a Birmingham jail. And so many others of our great leaders, Nelson Mandela, 27 years. It seems so hypocritical to see those that elevate him now to this teddy bear, to this harmless, loving, forgiving icon, and forget that he spent 27 years in jail, isolated, castigated, with no guarantee that he would ever see daylight again from the other side of bars. It wasn't a career move when he went to Robbins Island. We salute South Africa as the great nation that it is. <laughs> but this African people dwells in America. And while we do not have the same kind of apartheid that we once knew, we still have, hopefully for just a few more weeks, stop and frisk. And we still have prisons populated by millions of our young men and women. And we still have people who are denied the food that their babies need by the taking away of food stamps and other kinds of safety nets. And we still have an immigration policy that takes it against the very ones who helped build the great nation. God gave us a sun-kissed son of the soil of South Africa, Nelson Mandela. And on behalf of her father, Gina Belafonte delivered a message. Dubbed a terrorist by the government of the United States, the good people of this nation rejected that point of view. And joined with the struggle as he fought the oppressor with truth and love. A powerful eulogy was delivered by the Reverend Dr. James A. Ford, Jr. Social and political freedom is first semester. My friend Carlisle Marnie used to say to me, Jim, when you finally help solve the race problem, that's only intramural sports when compared to the class issue. Here we are. Here we are celebrating all that has been accomplished and we may use up all our energy enumerating the names we call him, talking about his accomplishments, and use up our energy before we come to second semester. Second semester is about now that we have kind of come together, we have overcome racialistic understandings, and we have finally stopped having group areas acts and stuff like that, and apartheid has been knocked in the head, and we've started coming together. I want to say this to you, and then I'm going to sit down as soon as I can. <laughs> as in Isaiah 55, God seems to be struggling to get our attention. In one verse it says, ho, everyone. Later on it says, Incline your ear to me. In another place it says, listen to me. God wants our attention. Then the South African Consulate General gave the closing remarks before Reverend Forbes gave the benediction. He will remain an inspiration for future generations. We acknowledge with deep gratitude the debt we owe to this humble and great giant who unified our nation and who's revered globally. It is a privilege and an honor that today, on behalf of uh, the people of South Africa, on behalf of the permanent mission to the United Nations and the South African Consulate General, we would like to say thank you, a very heartfelt thank you to the Riverside Church, to our eminent uh, speakers who are here with us today, and to you for having joined us as we mourn and as we pay tribute to 
and as we celebrate the legacy of our former president, Nelson Mandela. After the event, the ambassador and others offered these remarks. The death of Mandela brings us into focus. And of course, we will remain in focus because people would want to see whether indeed we are meeting all these ideals which he represented. And I have no doubt that the leadership back home uh, is conscious of that fact, that they have to live up to the expectation of Mandela. They have to live up to the expectation of the whole world. Look, we're not going to be like him. Uh, he's one of a kind, but we can at least follow in that direction. My relationship with uh, South Africa went way beyond the fact that South Africa elected him president. When ANC was here in America raising funds, I was involved with fundraising for against apartheid. We also demonstrated against apartheid. And I had the honors when Nelson Mandela came to America in 1990 to be on the committee to welcome him to America, especially to Harlem. I was on the Harlem committee with Alain Bay Braith and several other people, and we welcomed him and Winnie to this little village of Harlem, uh, which we now uh, have a space there on 120th call, uh, Africa Square. An artist and the national anthem singer for the event also spoke to Sahara TV and remembered Nelson Mandela in song. Holy Sasa, Holy Sasa Mandela, freedom is in your hands. Show us the way to freedom in this land of Africa. And one of my favorite that I used to sing in South Africa, freedom is coming tomorrow. Get ready, mama, prepare. <laughs> okay. Get ready, mama, prepare for your freedom. Freedom is coming tomorrow. Yeah, ya gula son taba mama. Yeah, ya gula son taba mama. Freedom is coming tomorrow. Now, cherry, babam, Mandela, lalanga, cholo. Lalanga, cholo. Tata Mandela, we thank you. We thank you. Words cannot express how much we appreciate you. I'll never, ever, ever forget you. And we shall continue. We shall continue. For what he did for us, we shall continue. This, should, this shouldn't be the end. This should be a, a next chapter for us without him. We love you, Tata. Fungai Maboreke for Sahara TV.